Hello, I want to thank everyone for joining us today for our webinar on the fine art of networking. My name is Melissa O'Connor and I will be the facilitator for today's presentation. Before we begin, I want to start with a few logistics. In order to get the best sound quality, we strongly recommend that you call in from a telephone as well as having the webinar pulled up on your computer. To join by conference call, locate the audio box on your dashboard screen and make sure that the telephone radio button is selected. Underneath that, there's a telephone number and access code. You dial a number, enter the access code, and then enter your audio PIN. Although it is possible to participate without using your phone, we won't be able to hear the questions you have unless your microphone is enabled. If you do have any questions during the webinar, we ask that you please type your question in the chat box and we'll pose those questions to the presenters at the end of today's webinar. Or, if you'd like to ask the presenters your questions directly, you may select the raised hand icon and time permitting, we'll unmute your line and allow you to speak. Remember, this option is only available to those who have called on the conference call or have a quality microphone connected to their computer. And finally, please note that today's webinar is being recorded and we will provide a link to the recording via email once the webinar is concluded. Additionally, we will be sending a follow-up survey after the webinar and we'd really appreciate any feedback you would be willing to provide. And now I am pleased to turn today's presentation over to the experts, Tara Palacios, Director of BizLaunch, and Will Fuentes, CEO and Founder of Lima Retail. This is the attendees. Yeah. Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to the Art of Networking, a webinar. It is my pleasure to have you here this uh, this afternoon on this beautiful sunny day here in Arlington, Virginia. Uh, and really grateful that you're here with us during the lunch hour as well. Uh, it is my absolute pleasure to share today's program with my comrade in arms, Will Fuentes. Hi, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well, enjoying this beautiful fall slash winter day. <sighs> Feels so good outside. Uh, and Will is the CEO and founder of Lima Retail. He is also part of our Entrepreneur in Residence program here in Arlington. And really looking forward, I've got some formal slides that we're going to get through, but I'm really looking forward to speaking more with Will about how he's been able to build up his network, how to maintain it, what are some of the best practices in going out there, because I think networking itself just creates such havoc with people, their heart races and beats, and it's just something that people face with a lot of trepidation. And so we're going to try to pull that, um, that curtain behind Oz and really get into the meats of what are some of the best practices that you can do. Uh, but before we get into that, um, I was remiss in our la webinar that we did last week um, just to talk a little bit about our program. Most of the resources that we have here are free. Uh, the majority of them are, I'd say, 99.9%. Uh, we offer personalized counseling sessions, a variety of educational programs, and of course, that dreaded networking term. We have networking opportunities that come up all the time, also a lot of free research data, that you can access um, online. Uh, there we go. Lots of connections, i.e. networking again. And I'm really pleased to have Will here as our entrepreneur in residence. Um, Will, do you mind describing the program and, and some of the things that you do in the ERR program here in Arlington? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the Entrepreneur in Residence program is a free program that's available to anyone. You don't have to be an Arlington County resident to come in and spend some time with, with me or with my co-founder, Carrie Scott. Um, and we run the gamut of, of, of things that uh, are of interest to burgeoning entrepreneurs and, and people that are just kind of coming into, um, into the business building uh, side of things. And what we look at is we, we help people with their pitch. We help them with their decks. We help them even understand what they need to do in order to approach an investor. Uh, we also help them navigate uh, the entrepreneurial community because there's a lot of resources out there. Um, but we start to help, we, we point them out to resources that we find very, very valuable. 
so that they can, one, begin building their network, right. but two, also gaining a better understanding of what's going on in the space. Um, and then, you know, uh, depending on, on how the relationship goes, uh, most people have a tendency to, you know, come back every month or every quarter and give us progress on their business mm -hmm. or, you know, ask us for additional help or, you know, help us find vendors if they need some or, or uh, other resources that are available. So it's really just about uh, I, I spent a lot of time early on uh -huh. um, trying to figure out how to even begin mm -hmm. and we wanted to shorten that process for a lot of people because um, you know, every good idea you know that you have out there you know someone else is probably thinking of it too so sometimes you just want to get right. get it going and, and working on it and I would say I probably spent about nine months before I figured out even where to begin and how to do it. Um, so you're able to share some of your wisdom and insights with folks and you're giving back in yeah. a way to the entrepreneurship community, entrepreneur community. Yeah, and we'll talk a little bit more when it gets to my part about uh, building that network and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of the resources that are out there are, are about building that network. And if you do the networking right, mm -hmm. um, you can quickly, quickly build a pretty powerful network. And I'll share a little bit of, of, of how I did that, where I came from in terms of what I could pull on in terms of mm -hmm. building my network and, and how very quickly, exponentially it grew and, mm -hmm. and became just a great network that, that I, you know, I say, humbly say, somehow or other I've lucked into at this point. I think. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm really looking forward to um, hearing your wisdom. And, and the good thing to everybody out there in the uh, webinar land is that Will does not go away. Uh, he's available here and will provide some information as to how you can um, set up an appointment uh, with Will Fuentes, uh, with Lemur. So with that, we're going to jump right in to what is networking. Um, I, I, I like this because I'm in economic development, and one of the things that we're tasked to do is to go out and meet people, to bring new businesses into the community. And so for me at first, and, and a lot of people are surprised by this, but I found it made me have a very uncomfortable feeling in the pit of my stomach. Uh, going out, meeting people that I did not know, um, trying to find out what businesses were interested in coming into our community. Oh, gosh, it, it was just something else for me. But I had to overcome that, and so I'm going to share some of my tips. We're going to get into what really it is about networking and how it can actually benefit your business. Um, it can be quite expensive, um, but if you're strategic about it, and depending on the types of events and programs that you participate in, you want to make sure that you're getting that return on investment. So if you sign up for a chamber, for example, and you have a year-long membership, make sure you set aside the money to be able to participate in the chamber event so that you're maximizing your exposure. Just in advertising where you have to be seen several times before people get it. The same is true when you think about networking. You have to be out there in the community, in your industry sector that you specialize in, and you have to be consistent. So really making sure that you're being as strategic as possible so it's not expensive. It being a time waster. I never think networking is a time waster. You know, you go to an event, and maybe it's not your direct customers, but there are people in that room that could potentially help you to find who your end customer is. And you never know what who people uh, know. And so it's really building up that network. And it can be a good use of time and a good use of your marketing dollars and your marketing money. One of the things that we always talk about when we go out networking, when you're going to a, a national conference or a uh, uh, a week-long event or activity, uh, you don't have to go as an exhibitor. Being an exhibitor can cost you a lot of money. I've, I've done exhibitions where we paid, uh, not with the county, but in my, private, in my prior life, uh, where we paid 10 grand uh, to be on the showroom floor, and we paid to have the carpeting and to have the, the digital flat screens, and that's a lot of money. It might be worth your while just to go there with lots of cards, go to the conference of the year, and go to the booth and meet people, and go to the networking events that they have at night. Um, that might be a, a really good use of your marketing dollars when you're out there networking. And Can don't, I jump in there yeah, really quickly? Please do. Please do. I, I will give you a marketing hack that was taught to me that was amazing. Ah. And it's using social media and Twitter uh -huh. and finding out what the hashtag is for that big conference. And even Prior if you, to the conference? 
prior to or when they post it, uh -huh. and even if you don't attend, you follow it and you get involved in the conversation. And you get involved in the conversation by what people are talking about, what they're posting about. You find relevant articles that are relevant because you you have the ability because you're at home, you're not there to be able to do, be doing searches on things that people are looking at, and they will re-engage you and start talking to you as if you're there. You can get a lot of networking done that way. I love it. Um, and it's funny that you should say that because I did that to an event last week. It was one, I think it was in San Diego, and it was on technology and some of the latest trends, and I was like, gosh, I couldn't afford to go out there, but then I followed the hashtag, and there was all kinds of great articles. Yeah, and if, and if you are at the conference, it's also great to, to be able to find out who the keynotes and who people are going to be, mm -hmm. follow them, and then people, when they're posting to them, you'll see mm -hmm. who's going to go look at, uh, go to those talks or whatever else, and you can start, uh, you can, you can start kind of building around who you're trying to contact. Uh, maybe you're not going to get to the keynote, but maybe there's five or ten other people that you want to talk to, and if they're in that keynote, like sitting in the audience, it's a great way to interact with them. People in conferences are really open, especially when they're tweeting back and forth and saying, hey, let's go to booth 185 later and grab a cup of coffee and, and, and talk about his, his speech. And people will have a tendency to, to, to respond, and you know, especially if you're adding value, and uh, meet with you. This is why I had asked Will to join me on this workshop topic, because that is the key of maximizing your time and your effort and making sure you're getting the most out of something. So any, as I'm going along, if you hear so, definitely please jump in, because this only makes the experience Absolutely. for folks that much more uh, better. Um, but networking is a great way to meet people, to build your network, and of course, yes, there is the free food, um, which uh, suffice to say, when I first started in economic development, the first year, I gained 30 pounds. <laughs> because every event that I was going to, there was free food, there was free drink, and I thought, oh gosh, I need to go there and I need to eat. But on my tips later on as we go through this presentation, you'll find out that free food isn't what it's all I mean, it's extra calories, of course, um, but it's not all what it's made up to be because you might want to be doing networking versus uh, eating your way through. Do we have a ha do we have a hashtag for this? No, we don't. Oh, we don't have a hashtag. No, but you know what we could do? We could do biz launch at the biz launch at one that we do for our biz launch chat. Sure. So it's pound biz launch at, and I'll I'll follow along on Twitter as we go through. And we'll post some uh, salient uh, information. Okay, just the facts. You know, what networking can do for you. Um, more new business is generated by networking than any other marketing activity. And a lot of people don't think networking and marketing is, is similar, but I am here to say it should be within your marketing packet. You should have, as well as advertising, as well as social media, you should have in your business plan what type of networking opportunities you're going to be going to, where you can be a subject matter expert, where you can go speak, and where you could go meet people. Seventy percent of new business is actually gained through referrals or relationship marketing. These are the facts. Um, being able to go out there and find new customers is just guaranteed if you do networking right. And networking can be a very cost-effective way to build your business. So knowing that and knowing this information, it really is the ability to build your brand. You know, uh, not only will people see your website, will see your logo, they'll see you. And for most of us, our business is synonymous with ourselves, so it really is about building that. It's a deliberate campaign to connect with people who can connect you with more business. So this is a way, networking really is about what that return on investment is. And you can really understand other people's needs and being able to provide resources and products that can meet a need. Many times as an entrepreneur we think, oh, you know, this person needs this. I know they need this, but we've never talked to them. If you're at a conference or if you're at an event and there's a keynote, somebody that is a potential client, you can find out. You can ask them. Um, and it doesn't hurt just to ask the question, or you could ask a group of people collectively to find out. It really makes your business planning strategic, and we talked about this in our social media webinar we had last week. It's all about the strategy. Things aren't just happening to you, 
you are proactively going out and getting business through your networking campaign? I would say that you need to spend as much time in terms of figuring out how you're going to network uh, early, in the early stages as you do in terms of how your product's going to work and stuff. Mm. Um, you know, one of the best pieces of advice that was given to me was, you know, you need to impugn across every re, every touch point that you have with a potential right. customer. So if your website looks great, but your presentation in person is horrible, that's a problem. If your presentation in person is, uh, is, is great, but your website's bad, that's a problem, right? If all those things are great, but your product is crap, that's an even bigger problem. So, you know, you... The red flag is yeah, going yeah. out, right? The yellow cards are, are coming out. Um, and then you become an, SB, an SME on a topic or issue that you love. I think we entrepreneurs love what they do. And when you feel passionate about something, other people pick up on it. And so I think, you know, as you go out and you talk about what it is that you do, um, you know, you're becoming an expert. You're branding your business. You're being very deliberate about what it is that you're doing. And it's a great way to meet other like-minded people. It's a great way for you to go out there and to um, expand, um, like on LinkedIn, like on uh, Facebook or in Twitterverse, you know, it's really being able to pull together a lot of different folks and to receive business intelligence. Um, a lot of times we go out and the only times that in economic development we hear about certain things is by being out there. Um, and if we're not out there, we don't really know the real deal of what's going on. Because, you know, you've got your print media, but that's only good as yesterday's news nowadays. Things happen so fast. So really going out there also and going to be seen at the conference of the year is really, really important. And did I mention the free food? Um, <laughs> and that's synonymous with 30 pounds, so always keep that in mind. Uh, but also, there's no point going anywhere if people don't remember you have been there. And so making sure that the business cards that you have, that your presentation really reflects so that people remember that you stand out from the legions of other folks. And I think some of the tips, some of the things like in standing out, it's just being prepared. I think when most people go out, they're not prepared to really talk about their business and what they're doing. And so you don't really remember them. You remember the people that are very visual that can describe what they're doing in a really great way because not a lot of people are doing that. Do you find that to be your experience? Yeah, yeah. I also find it uh, interesting that, um, you know, even the most seasoned networker still in any sort of, in any room of people that he doesn't know, mm -hmm. he doesn't, this is going to sound really stupid, he doesn't know those people. So That's right. there's still that little bit of data, how are they going to react to me, are they going to like me, people still they have trepidation as well. Absolutely, right? absolutely. So, you know, you just got to think, hey, everyone is swimming with the sharks today, but I'm also one of the sharks, mm -hmm. right? And you just mm -hmm. got to go in with that mentality. And I think, like, a lot of times I, I see new entrepreneurs that I take to events just kind of, you know, stand back in the corner because they don't feel they have a lot to offer. But trust me, you have a lot to offer. Well, let me ask you this. Like, I, I go to events, and there are people standing in clusters. Yeah. Are there any tips that you can give to people, like how to break that cluster? Because sometimes even myself, I feel like, oh, they're already on a topic. If I sidle up here, you, you risk not being noticed or the conversation not being able to join in. What, what would you recommend? Wow, that? that's, a, that's a tough one. I, I think, you know, I'm of I'm the mindset that, you know, if, if you want to join the group, you, you have to make a step forward and, and ask, right? Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. There's nothing in networking It's all about asking. Right. And, you know, introducing yourself and, and, and really, you know, asking, you know, what they're talking about and, and really kind of getting into it. And if it's, if it's personal, they'll let you know. Trust me. <laughs> Sometimes they kind of snidle away, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of times, you know, one of the things that I do when I go to a group, I said, oh, you know, I've never seen you guys at these events before. Um, you, know, uh, you know, how did you hear about it or how do you guys know each other? Uh -huh. And then a lot of times you end up finding out that they all just met, right? Right. So that's true. there's no connection there. So now you know. You kind of know where that where, where that whole group of networking uh, sits, and, and and kind of how long they've been together and stuff. And that that's always a great indicator whether you know it's appropriate for you to join the conversation or not. If they're like, oh, we're all friends from college, and we just ran into each other today, you're probably not going to have a lot to, <laughs> to add to the conversation. That's like your tip number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but really, definitely, you know, ask you know how they heard about the event and how they all know each other. That's always a great icebreaker. And not having that fear. Yeah, absolutely. Not having that 
Um, and getting into some traditional networking platforms, these are the things that have been around for, for decades, is you know, joining that local chamber of commerce. Many times what I'll tell people is if you get in with the president or CEO of a chamber, they'll usually let you come to a couple of events for free. Go and check them out. You know, pass out the business card. Um, get to meet new people. But make sure that it's, it's um, going to actually benefit you before you sign on the dotted line so that you're not um, disappointed. Uh, definitely uh, get involved with local economic development offices. Um, there are economic development agencies around the state. Um, there are state agencies. There's local agencies, um, regional agencies. Board of Trade is one. Usually those organizations uh, are tasked in bringing people together. And so uh, I would start there and see what's going on in that community. If you're a tech firm, they may, there may be a tech council that the chamber or that the economic development office will host. And a lot of the economic development initiatives are free. And it'll give you an opportunity to meet different people. You can join your association. Uh, a lot of times being part of an association, you share a lot of um, like minds, and also you can get a lot of business intelligence and information, even healthcare sometimes through the associations. Uh, there are a lot of small business groups, whether it's a, a meetup in your area, whether there are these referral groups which meet uh, monthly. Uh, in Arlington, there's a variety of different uh, public-private partnerships like Columbia Pike, um, Revitalization Organization, there's Clarendon, Courthouse Business Alliance, and there are also bids, our business improvement um, development agencies that are in Roslyn, Crystal City, uh, that you can participate in. And these small businesses groups or these entrepreneurship groups meet every so often and they talk about things that are pertinent to you as an entrepreneur. Also, you can uh, join different professional organizations in your industry sector, attend annual conferences that we talked about. You can actually sponsor a lot of local events. And you can also join neighborhood and community groups. I've actually gone out and spoken to several here in Arlington. Um, and there are tons of entrepreneurs that are part of these groups and organizations. And it's a great way to be able to connect. These are all face-to-face -face options with the ability of uh, there may be costs associated, maybe not. But it's an opportunity for you to go out there and to mix with other people. Some of my tips on traditional networking is, you know, and Will alluded to this, but it's to perfect your, your pitch. You know, be prepared. Know what you're going to say. Know your audience. Know the things, the buzzwords, which will resonate and prepare before you go out there, which means practice, practice, practice. You know, it's so funny today they named uh, Selfie is now going to be part of the Oxford Dictionary. Uh, take video of yourself. You know, all of the smartphones have the ability for you to take video and, and do your pitch if you don't have anyone to pitch to. And look at yourself. Many times you don't realize that you have some of these nervous twitches like twirling your hair, flipping hair, stuttering. You know, and once you, you see yourself, then you can visualize and say, oh, I don't want to do that and kind of cut that out. As, as you're practicing. And making sure that you're actually listening, what I call actively listening to what people are saying, not anticipating what they're going to say and interrupting them, but really listen. And I'll, I'll say this again. I've said this the last couple of events I've been to, but there was a VC at an event that I went to, and she said 35 seconds. And she knows whether or not she's going to invest in your company. So every second counts. Everything that you say out of your mouth really resonates with people, and they're wanting to know whether or not they want to do business with you or not. And being able to respond. Um, in the new year, we're actually going to be doing a webinar on customer relationship management services that you can utilize. So as you're collecting cards, you're actually capturing that data, saying how you met this individual, and any kind of follow-up that you need to have. So it's not just I'm collecting these cards and I'm not doing anything, but actually setting them into your database, how you met them, how uh, they can actually benefit your business if you want them to be your customer. Any thoughts on any of those so far, Will? Um, do any resonate for you? They, they, all, actually, they all actually do resonate. Um, it's, uh, really, it, it is about perfecting your pitch, but you know, for me, I 
perfect my pitch, not on my business, but really on how I want people to remember me. Ah. And um, the thing for me was to remember that I'm someone that, uh, that wants to help. Mm -hmm. and, and so I never let in with what I do. And I think ah. too often entrepreneurs are, are so excited about what they've created or that what they're passion. about. Yeah. Um, and, and that's great. Uh -huh. But so is the other person on the other side. So asking them about their business and what they're doing and, and really, like you say, actively listening and asking questions, that's a great way for them to remember you. Uh -huh. um, and it's a, it's a great way um, for, for you to really start building kind of that network. That's true. Um, that's true. Because I can remember, like, so many people coming up to me and just going on and on about <laughs> and, like, getting me and I'm trapped in a corner and I can't get out. And you don't want to be remembered for that. You want to be remembered, like for you, it was helping other people. Yeah, 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 for helping other people or asking. And, and the beauty of that is, is if you get a nugget out that uh, of uh, some way that they can help you, mm -hmm. you can reference it back in an email to them, which you, you're talking about follow-up. For me, the reference was, you know, things like, you know, you told me your son played lacrosse. Mm -hmm. I just ran across this great lacrosse video, whatever it was at this store that's near my house. I'm not sure if you know about it, but, you know, you might want to it check really it out. It really isn't about the personal interaction as well, like building a relationship with yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, absolutely. I think I think that's the key, right, is that is that in early stages of the relationship, you, you, you want to be seen more as a giver than a taker, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, because takers, people will quickly recognize who the takers are in any sort of network environment, right? That's right. Um, but, you know, givers opens up your network because maybe you cannot help the person across from you, uh, you know, directly, directly mm -hmm. but maybe they have a cousin or an uncle or someone, you know, that they want to reference you to. Well, now your network's just grown by two people plus whomever those people know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that was kind of always my key um, was, was seeing how I could help, you know, any, anyone um, when I was at these events. Um, and then really, you know, when it did come time to ask about my business, mm -hmm. Absolutely, have to have that pitched out. Oh, let me you know real quick, and then you know back to them. And if they have questions about, it, then great. Let's, let's then you know where their interest lies, and and then you can explore a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, to dress or not to dress, um, really, I think we had a actually Will and I did a pitch event where this came up. Um, but know your audience. And so when you're going, that resonates. People remember. Don't be the person in the bright polka dotted outfit that everybody talked about. <laughs> Unless it's a clothing line and you want them to remember for your, your colors, right? Yeah. Um, so really understand your audience and where you're going and if, if you were to dress up or to dress down. Uh, always wear your name badge on the right side so that people can easily look. They're always looking to the right when they're first meeting you. Uh, eat before the event. Um, <laughs> this is definitely a good thing. Uh, that way you keep the pounds off and you'll never get any of those terrible little things in your teeth as you're talking to people. I have done that. And thank you, person who told me that I had food in my mouth, uh, stuck in my teeth. Uh, and don't chew gum. Uh, that way you can clearly speak, people can understand what it is that you're saying. Uh, the next one, never, 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 never forget your business cards. Uh, one thing that I do is I change uh, my bags quite a bit, and in each of my bags I keep business cards. Because you never know when you're out and about who you're going to meet, and it's nothing to say, oh gosh, you know. But you do, there are, you now I should say with technology nowadays, with your smartphone you can easily uh, you know, capture people's data and information, but there's nothing like um, being prepared and having your card. Um, and your card, if you're in the creative field, I really encourage you can be as creative as possible, uh, something that people will remember you by. I always, uh, at one event that we did recently, one of our chocolatiers, uh, he was walking around with this huge shopping bag, and I'm like, what's in that bag? You know, at first I'm, I'm, he's clutching, he's you know, holding on to it tight, but his business cards were actually bars of chocolate that he had made, and he was passing it out at the event that we were at. So a lot of people remembered him, and I think he got some great business out of that. So that was pretty cool. And uh, always remember your posture um, and how you're standing. And the last bullet I can't emphasize enough, have fun with it. Um, just think you're going in there, and you're going to come out, and you're going to meet, you know, if your goal is to meet five new people. You come out meeting those people, and you enjoy it. Don't anticipate it. 
you know, as, as a chore. I guess in life, whenever we embrace the things that we're doing, that's what we get out of it, I, I would say. So for traditional networking, these are some of my tips. Any other additional thoughts, Will? Yeah, one of the things is I was very unselective very early on mm -hmm. um, in, in terms of the events that I went to, uh, if it was free. Oh, yeah. And then oh, yeah. kind of I, I would go to a lot of, the, a lot of those. Uh -huh. But over time, you start to realize, like, you know, that some events have more value than others. That's true. And, and, and you'll get to learn that as, as you attend more and more events. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think, you know, it's pretty uh, important to become discerning over time. Uh, Early on, it's okay for people to see you, but you don't want to be known as that professional networker all the true. time. You know, you, you really want to, you know, uh, at this point, like, I like to make an entrance now, right? I like when people be like, I haven't seen you in a while. What's new? <laughs> because right? you can't keep pitching the same thing over That's and right. over again, right? That's right, going in. Exactly. The same stuff is happening, you know. <laughs> and that's one of the resources that you get from uh, the EIR program is, yeah. is you, get, you know, we're not going to tell you what events to go to or not go to, but we can tell you what type of events we went to that we found really valuable and what other events we found to be not as valuable, you know, in terms of long-term potential. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and very early on, there's so much noise around entrepreneurship, and everyone's, oh, you should go yeah. to this event, you should go to this event. You should go. Well, before you know it, and I have to be honest with you, I mean, this was us, mm. you know, we're going to six events a week. And, you know, so not only are we doing, you know, running our business or trying to create our business, but then on top of it, we're out till, you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night every night mm. doing this and stacks and stacks of, of, of business cards and, and everything else. And it's, it just, it, it, can, it can weigh on the family life balance. That's right. They can also make you very tired. And also, also could get you uh, frustrated a little bit because you don't feel like you're moving forward. And stuff. That's so. right. Because I, I could see, like, um, with what we do, we're tasked with, you know, my job is to network. But then I can get overwhelmed because we do events such as this and we have other things that we're supposed to do during the day. So really being able to, in the very beginning, create a life-work balance yeah. is probably key because people can suss if you're tired. Yeah. Right, or, or you mean, oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> you know, what's new with you, you know? So really being conscious of and selective is yeah. probably your, your best advice. Yeah, yeah, I mean, over time, I don't think, I, I think early on, I mean, you just, you just have to dedicate and say, I'm going to, like, network. I know this is what I need to do. Um, but then over time, you can become more more selective on it. And, As you go. Yeah, and, and you start to focus maybe less on, on the broader events and more of the niche events, right, the things that are focused on your industry that you're working in. You know, or saying, you know what, I am going to go away for a week to this big conference, and that's what I'm going to do. And you know, my family's just going to we're going to figure it out for that week, but okay. you know, or whatever else it is, because you start to start becoming a little bit more selective, more selective and discerning as to what. You yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because you you reach a critical mass in your network anyway. Mm -hmm. That you know, the addition of, of one person isn't you know going to be the tipping point. Um, but the addition of one person in your industry who's a super well connected That's right. is probably worth whatever that is. So. Oh, great advice. I'm so glad I have you. Did I say that? Uh. <laughs> um, now just uh, giving you some and how you perfect your pitch. Um, just some key tools that are out there from the marketers of the world is that you have your, now this doesn't get into the relationship piece. This is just you know, getting your 60-second business pitch um, that you can practice. You know, you, you have your lead-in sentence, which has your company name, a uh, high-level overview of what product and or services that you're offering, your market segment that you're in, and the business problem that your company solves. And then you can go into what your unique selling proposition is after that, um, if it's different um, than the competition that makes your company better to work with or different. Um, some of the things in order to be effective in pitching, keep it short, concise, and compelling. I liked how our friend uh, Glenn talked about telling a story, mm -hmm. being able to visually tell a story versus just pitching, you know, really painting a broad brush of what it is that you do and bringing people in, um, I think is really important. Um, being able to develop different pitches based on your audience, and what your objectives and time frames, different events that you're going to, you may have to have a different uh, uh, standard pitch that you give, uh, going back to practicing, and making sure that it is a conversation, and that there's a, some type of call to action for folks. Um, this resource, the Harvard Business School actually had a great resource that was available where you could actually put your pitch in, 
and it will let you know how well it is. Um, I'm not sure if that's still available. I'm going to check that out, but that is something that is that is there for folks. And this is from a Tech Coast Fast Pitch Contest. This is an example of a winning business pitch. They were able to get funded for the idea that they were doing. Um, the business is called Pet Play. And uh, they were introducing a line of gourmet canned cat foods, which just, to me, is just cool anyway. Um, not only do the products look good, smell great, and taste great, because they are people food for cats. That does resonate to me for some reason. <laughs> you may not want to, but you could actually eat it. Uh, that would stick with me if I met somebody that said that. Um, research shows consumers love the products for their refreshing look and pleasant smell, and cats devour them. Petit Cuisine is 100% nutritionally complete for cats and is made from products that you would buy at the meat and fish counter. So that actually won, and I can see why. Uh, but that is just to give you an example. Uh, some different options for social media networking, of course. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, blogs, YouTube, and email marketing initiatives. Uh, we actually did a workshop last week on the best use of social media, and we looked at a, a different variety of platforms. One thing that I will say is that um, you really can be impactful in social media, but just as in traditional networking, face-to-face -face networking, you have to be very strategic in what it is that you're doing. Um, you can't do one tweet every five months. I've seen people. Um, I mean, you can. It depends on how it resonates. Um, with folks, and it could have a lot of legs with it, but really coming in very strategic and, and using your time where you're putting information, you know, I'm going to update my um, fans on Facebook once a week, Twitter three times a day, I'll do a blog, which is tied that in, which all really goes into bringing people back into your website. Um, are there any thoughts for you, Will, um, in best with social media? Uh, you know, uh I think my, my thought process on Twitter is uh, you should listen more than talk, right? That's and, right. And, and uh, you know, if you become someone that's constantly bombarding people with... Uh, Stop. Yeah, you know, <laughs> they, they have a tendency to, to, to think of it as noise and, and tune you out. Um, on the blog piece, I think the blog is a great, is a great piece. Um, we, um, we, we did, we did a, quite a few blogs early on, and then um, what I ended up doing actually was traffic to the blogs was okay. Mm -hmm. But I ended up using it as my monthly newsletter, not to investors or anything, but to actual potential clients. Oh, cool. So I would send it out to them and I'd say, hey, listen, every every month I send an update of what's going on in the retail space. Mm -hmm. You know, can, do you mind if I include you on it? And, you know, everyone's going to say no because they can just discard it. That's right. The beauty of it is, is if you keep the writing really good early on, uh -huh. they'll they'll read it. And how do I know? Because they'll write back. They'll write comments back to me and they'll say, hey, great you know, interesting, here's some other things you need to look at. And then again, you can start to build kind of not only your personal brand uh, mm -hmm. through that, but also the personal relationship you have with that person. How long did it take you to, to maintain the blog with the newsletter? Was that a lot of, was it time consuming? No, um, so I, I would, so I would probably, I guess, yeah, I mean, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would say I probably read between two to four hours a day. Wow. Of of uh, industry news, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and then I take notes on that stuff, and then I compile like an interesting. Uh, I compile two things. One is just here's some interesting articles that came out. I have a running like kind of aggregate thing. Kind yeah. of the information, mm -hmm. and then I'll ha write on one of one of the topics that I see that comes up the most. That's what I'll write about, and I'll send that out to people within an organization that I've met and talked to that I feel like um, are people that I want to continue to be in touch with. Mm -hmm. If I just sent him a, a blog link, um, you know, yeah. we didn't see as much response. Yeah. Uh, you know, I also think that part of it is, is, is I always ask. I said, you know, even when they rejected me, I, I always asked if I could send them that stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it reopened a lot of conversations. Wow. So it actually was able to help you in yeah, it was, doing you know, it's a, it's a ma marketing slash networking piece. And I will tell you that I ended up, talking to some extremely high-level people uh, in, within my industry that I never would have gotten to had I not done that because those, those emails have been forwarded around the industry and people would read it and then they would contact me and be like, hey, 
this was forwarded to me by, by my buddy at XYZ Retailer. I found it really interesting. We're working on a project very similar. What are you, you know, do you mind if we get on the phone and talk about this? Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I mean, but that's what you wanted it to do. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. I, exactly. And, uh, you know, I also had, um, you know, I also had the, for the, the, the great fortune of, of um, walking into a meeting with the CIO of a, probably the fourth largest retailer in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had been sending that newsletter, that little email newsletter to people within his organization. Mm -hmm. And he had brought in his VP of technology into the meeting. And the VP of technology goes, well, you're not the Will Fuentes from the email, are you? <laughs> and I had never met him. But in, yeah, in the organization, yeah. they had been forwarding stuff like that. Wow. So it does have, if it's done right, it has the power of impacting your business. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, and then to be honest, uh, you know, we should have probably kept doing it on the blog side of it, but my co-founder managed our website and was so busy with a lot of different things, and uh, he's a perfectionist, so he wouldn't just let something go up there, so I said, you know what, I'm going to shift over, I'll take care, because I, the writing is fine, I'll just send, the, send it out, yeah, 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 you keep building our product, I won't bother you with, you know, with these posts. And stuff. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's great. Although, I, I will say, the other way is better. The, the, the putting it to blog, answer. tweeting it out, really being strategic about it, okay. you know, and, and maybe including it as a newsletter at some point is probably the best way to go. Mm -hmm. um, we had, I, I spent a lot of time with, with, with uh, different entrepreneurs, and, and, I, and I think if you can get into a rhythm of mm -hmm. when you blog and when you're, you, and when you're tweeting it out about it, um, you know, it just becomes just kind of like anything else, right? Just yeah. Kind of part of your business rhythm. Nature. Yeah, part of your business rhythm, right? So. This is the way. And I've seen other entrepreneurs here in Arlington that kind of have that rhythm. I see the tweets. I click on their links. And I kind of anticipate when it's coming because yeah. they've kind of, they're doing it at the same time all the yeah. time. And then it resonates with you yeah. so that you get the clicks. And then people are going to your website. I mean, that's the ultimate goal is yeah. really being able to create that. So with that, just do it, right? Just Absolutely. set up a time, get it on there. Um, if you don't have your, your business name saved already, please do so. You can go to namecheck.com and go ahead and save it, even if you're not ready. Um, one thing to keep in mind, we are going to be, based on feedback from last week's session, we're going to do um, uh, webinars on Facebook, on LinkedIn, how best to use those social media that will be coming up. And so, you know, stay tuned for that. Um, like Will was suggesting, design a campaign, keep it simple, and execute. Time and time again, it will get you customers. Um, respond to your customers and clients in a timely fashion. If they send you something on Twitter or LinkedIn, uh, make sure that you have the capacity to be able to respond. And update the information regularly. It's nothing more than going um, online and seeing that somebody hasn't been on something for a year or yeah. more. I've seen it and I'm like, are they still in existence, you know? Um, and you can also use social media and marketing for business intelligence and gathering information. And like everything in networking, have fun with it. I think that has been resonating throughout this um, presentation. And so with that, um, I'm going to turn to my friend Will Fuente. Oh, no. Oh, do you see this big picture? Oh, that's see horrible. Same logo? <laughs> On, I'm wearing that shirt today. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <that's weird. laughs> Minus the tie, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but talking about best networking practices, um, we've talked, filtered throughout this webinar today, but can you describe to us um, how you first got into networking, and how you built up your own business network. Uh, yeah, I guess um, I uh, a bit about my background. I was actually before I started Lima Retail, I was working um, for a retailer managing stores for them. Uh -huh. So my network was other store managers of retail people that you knew that yeah, you I mean, worked with exactly, and, and then. You know, so I thought. And then I really, you know, sat down one day and said, okay, you know, what have I done? Like, where have I gone to school? Where have I worked? You know, and, and started kind of looking to see if there was, like, you know, either alumni groups and stuff like that where, where I could kind of um, uh, just start to penetrate and get involved a little bit more in. Mm -hmm. And um, really kind of listed out kind of what the different buckets were of where I could start talking to people about what I wanted to do and see if I could build. 
and it started with friends and family, mm -hmm. and then it expanded into you know people from college that I knew, and then it went into high school, oh, and wow. um, you know, and, and so I ended up connecting with someone from my high school who started uh, guiding me. They had built a business and sold that business, and they were guiding me, and they, you know, not necessarily saying here are the people you should meet, uh -huh. but really like here are some events you should go to. Wow. Right. Here's some events you should go to. Um, by the way, when you go to these events, don't ask people if your idea is a good idea. My <laughs> <laughs> That's a good tip. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. But if you got to ask them, you shouldn't even be in the room. That's right. So, That's um, right. Oh, good point. Right. So, so uh, you know, I started going to the events, and, and, and really some of the stuff that you talked about, like I just knew uh, what, um, what I wanted to say because in my initial meetings with people, I mean, I would spend 45 minutes an hour just talking about why and why and how, and they didn't care. No. <laughs> and, and, and thankfully, someone, being polite. Yeah, yeah thankfully, <laughs> someone pulled me aside and says, you need to get this much more concise. And, uh, um, you know, by the way, you use this term and that's not the way it's, you know, that's not the way it's pronounced. And, oh, wow. You know, so, so really, you, you know, this kind, kind, kind enough person with their, with their honest feedback taught me that there's a couple of things, right? You need to know the verbiage that, you know, that, that you're, you're speaking to. You also need to know, um, how how to present your vision very quickly in a way that is going to be compelling. But more importantly, the biggest skill is what you talked about is that active listening. Um, and I actively listened. I had you know when I got someone's business card, I always had a pen. I would write you know I know, know everyone's been told to do this. You write a little note yeah. about that person. Yeah. Uh, a little note about what you found interesting or what they found uh, what you found interesting about them or something that they said or somewhere that they traveled or something. That resonated. Yeah, yeah, because it allows you to reach back to them, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, whether it's about their kids or a country they just visited or some type of food they like or mm -hmm. whatever it is, it allows you to reach back with something that's relevant to them mm -hmm. and can open up the conversation. I always remember people that asked something of me later on and they remembered something that I had experienced or gone through. I always remember them fondly mm -hmm. um, because I feel like they really care. You know that they and that they remembered something that might be minor to them, but it wasn't to me. It resonated. Yeah, I, and I think uh, before we got on the phone, I was telling uh, uh, Taria that mm -hmm. it's always about the ask, right? And most people think that the ask is about, "Can you do this for me?" Mm -hmm. and my ask always was, "What can I do for you?" Like I don't, you know. And early on, I didn't know a lot of people. I didn't have a broad network, but there were certain skill sets that I had. There were certain things in my background, you know, I, you know, that, that I, you know, that, that I could reference. I mean, you know, I had just finished managing an electronics and appliance store, so, you know, people t were telling me about this new house or whatever. I would say to them, hey, by the way, I can get you a great discount. Oh, wow. Or I know yeah. someone who does this. And really it was about that. It wasn't about my business, and, and it really opened them up to helping me out. And where in the conversation, just, it's just like a natural conversation that you have, and then you, at the end, you say, hey, before you part. Because a lot of times when you're meeting people, there's not a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's, there's definitely not a lot of time, right? But, you know, it, when there's not a lot of time and I get their card and I, don't, and I, and I didn't get in any sort of relevant information, I really would just, I, I would reference that. I would reference that part of it yeah, as well. Say, hey, we got to speak for about five minutes. It was a really interesting conversation for those five minutes. I'd love to be able to. To, to, to catch up with you uh, for a longer period of time. Can we grab coffee for 15 minutes? I'll come to you. Mm. I'll even bring the coffee Wow! if you would need me to. Because, you know, my ask, when it was those types of ask, it was very, you know, I wasn't going to ask for a lot, mm -hmm. right? You, you know, because, and then other people say, you know, shoot for the moon, you'll get the stars. I, I always felt that, you know, baby steps. And then you shoot for the moon, right? Okay. Like once, once you've established or then you shoot for the moon, right? So establishing that relationship going forward and then, after some time goes by, then the ask. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think, so I am, I am fairly well connected in the retail space now, and I get a lot of people that have apps or software or stuff that they want uh, to present to certain companies where I know the executives, and they literally will ask straight out of the gate, like, you know, can you introduce me to this person? Well. That's like, I don't even know you. Like, like, you know, like really? <laughs> you know, we haven't spent any time. Like, you know, you. Um, uh, how do I? How am I going to invest my social capital in you without even knowing what type of person you are? You know, 
uh, for me, and, and here's the other thing I always felt about it. If someone was giving me their time, uh -huh. I needed to give them more of my time. And what I mean by that is if uh, someone was saying, yeah, we could meet for coffee at 1 o'clock, I'd show up at 12.55, right, and never showed up at 101. 101 is not, is not appropriate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just never, ever did that. Um, because I Being very punctual. Well, because, respectful. and I will tell you why. Because if you're asking them to, to introduce you to their network, so, you know, if I'm asking someone to introduce me to, um, you know, the CEO of Gap, mm -hmm. right, because they're personal friends. Mm -hmm. That guy needs to know 100% sure that I'm going to represent him very well. And one of the ways you represent Personal. someone very well is by not being late. That's right. By being, you know, by being considerate of other people's time. So, but, but it, to make a long story short, so what did I do to, to build my network? It really, was, it really was about going out to a lot of events, mm -hmm. um, meeting as many people as I could, trying to remember as many important or relevant things to them, either about their business or their life or whatever else, and then finding a way you know, for me to, to help them. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it was something as, as simple as, you know, I write this blog. Oh, you know, if you ever need someone, if you ever need someone to, to, to proofread it because, you know, you don't have time or you just want to get someone's thoughts on it, send it to me. I'll be more than happy to look at it for you. Um, you know, to all the way to, you know, I need a refrigerator. Well, great. I have a couple buddies that work in an appliance store. Mm -hmm. You know, give me a call and I'll hook you up with them, right? Wow. Um, you know, so, so all, that, that was really how it happened. And then... You know, my, my network grew. It grew fairly quickly. Now, how did you? How do you balance that now? Like in any given day, like the number of networking events you go to, like kind of to sustain, yeah, or to grow where where you're at. How much you're on social media? Could you give us a snapshot of that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, one other thing. Um, if I met someone, I mm. would immediately look for their for their Twitter handle mm. as well as their LinkedIn. Yeah, and then I would try to connect with them via LinkedIn as well as Twitter. I love that because I feel like once I've met, there was, there was a debate last week about um, do you accept people on LinkedIn that you don't know? Mm -hmm. But I feel great if I've gone to an event and I've met somebody and then I'm in their net and we've had a great conversation and then I can continue that yep. because to me that's like a personal Rolodex, old-fashioned Rolodex, but a personal Rolodex of people that you can build upon network. I feel like if someone's giving me their car, they're giving me access to, to go ahead and connect with them. On yeah, the I agree. That's, that's agree. the way I look at it. It's the same thing as before. I would put it exactly into a Rolodex. This is just an electronic version. This is an right? electronic version. So, so I do. That's right. So, so now um, I, do, I, do a, I do mostly industry events. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so I'll do mostly industry events. Um, so a lot of retail-focused stuff. I will go... I will go to events where there is high value for me to learn from. And what I mean by that is there's a great speaker coming into town. I'll go to that event because I know a lot of – you'll run the gamut from new entrepreneurs to seasoned entrepreneurs, right? right. So, so but, but I don't – I won't just – I don't do a lot of the mixers. Ah, okay, okay. Like I, I really don't, mm -hmm. you know, unless there's like a tech cocktail stuff, I do those, I, I will go to those because there is, you know, I'd like to see the new stuff that's coming out, yeah, you know, and it, it is interesting to me, you know, but it, anything that it's like, you know, it's just strictly about food and alcohol and just, you know, yeah. and it's just networking, I very rarely do those because it's limited time, there's limited yeah. time. There's only so much time in a day. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, so I try to limit those to at most maybe like one a quarter, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Um, Be very strategic with your time. Yeah, unless it's a this is this is gonna sound horrible, and I'm <laughs> unless it's a uh, unless it's a a very inclusive list, uh, right? Uh -huh. So so like a uh, uh, couple organizations will will uh, put out. You know, we'll have dinners and drinks, and it's a very select group of like CEOs and executives, like or a small intimate group where you know you'll have the opportunity to talk. Yeah. To people, and yeah. it's not like a bunch of service providers and entrepreneurs, and sometimes it gets watered down. Exactly. Ah, gotcha. Although I will say that there is a great value in talking to service providers. That's true. There's. I've gotten a lot of free services. I've actually gotten a lot of interest from service providers, mm, nice. you know, because they're trying to gain your business, right? They, so they, they, they Yeah, they want, <laughs> they're willing to help. They want you to make money so you can pay them money. Right, that's exactly it. So, yeah. Well, I think what we will do now is, um, well, we do have 
speaking of mixers, we do have one <laughs> coming up on December 12th. Practice uh, everything that we've taught you in this webinar so far. So from 5 to 7 in Courthouse, we have a free business mixer at Guarapos. Join us, sign up today. Um, also, uh, keep in touch with us. We're, in social, we're on social media. Uh, you can also give us a call or email if you'd like to set up an appointment with Will uh, as our entrepreneur in residence. Um, and of course, follow us definitely on Twitter. It wouldn't be a networking seminar if we didn't ask. Uh, but I also want to be able to take uh, some questions from the audience as well. Okay, great. Um, we have a few questions. Um, the first one is, what are some techniques for people who get nervous approaching others at networking events? Ah, that's a very good question. Will, did you want to take that one on? Um, yeah. So the way I look at it is, uh, you know, I think of them as single serving friends, right? Like, you know, hey, it's just it's a short, sweet few minutes. And that little bit of awkwardness can lead to a lifetime of value. Um, and and that, that's one of the things. The other one is great is bring someone along. That's true. Even if, you know, bring someone along. Like a colleague, a friend. A colleague, a friend, exactly. You, you start to feel more comfortable. Uh, specifically, especially if they're like, uh, you know, like a Gary's person and they're a little bit, you know, uh, more out there. I, I can tell you I've been approached, I can distinctly remember at least five entrepreneurs that I have met where it was their friend who had nothing to do with their business that brought them over and said, hey, they're very shy, they, you know, they just, you know, oh, they, wow. you know they, they, they saw you in the newspaper, we came here because we heard you were going to be here and we wanted to meet you, but he doesn't know or she doesn't know how to approach you. And, and you know what? Sometimes your friend who has nothing to lose because they can care less, you know, whether that person is like, a, you. yeah, absolutely. To make that connection. I think bringing a friend is a great, great idea. Yeah, and, you know, I, I like what you said earlier that people are people. Yeah. And, you know, we all do the same things. We all have the same fears. Some CEOs have fears. You know, you same self-doubt. Same self-doubt. So I, I know one thing, trick of the trade that I've done is I've told myself I will not be by the wall, you know, and, and kind of say it over and over again and get out there and, like, challenge myself to leave out with at least three new connections, especially if I'm going into a place where I know I need to be there, but I, I have a lot of fear, so. Or find this wall where everyone is standing that is as scared <laughs> and you think, I'm not as scared as I am. I like that, too. <laughs> Melissa, as other questions? Yes, um, we have a question from Michelle, and she asked, um, if you met someone during a networking event and you follow up with them via email to request a meeting over coffee, but they respond via email saying something like their time is extremely scarce, um, do you, would you request to meet them over coffee again, or do you reply with the question that you have? Mm. That's a good one. That's a very good one. That, that, that's, a, uh, that's, that's an ex I don't know. I guess it depends on personality. I'm a pretty aggressive person, and, you know, I, when it comes to that, uh, you know, I have – in the past, I've said, hey, you know, like I said, that's why I, I really have told people, I'll bring the coffee to you, mm. and here's what I want to ask you. And, you know, if, if you know, and, uh, you know, or here's what I want to talk about. And that's that's how I'll follow up. And if they say, you know, I, I really don't have time, I just leave it alone. I just follow up with, you know, I, 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 you know, I send updates from time to time. I would love to keep you up to date on my progress. Mm. You know, there, there's... I can't think of a single person that, if you met them, would be the person that could, yeah, that would change everything. I mean, the, uh, aggressively going after someone because you think they are the end all be all might do more damage, mm -hmm. right, um, mm -hmm. than That's the true. than the good of the fifteen minutes would. Yeah. So I I, I always respond. I always respond with a, I'm open, you know, I know you're extremely busy, I'm open, I'm open to meeting at any time that's convenient for you. I can even bring the coffee. Um, I, I really want to, I want to talk about this thing, or this is my question to you. If we can't meet for coffee, would you mind taking a few minutes just to answer my question? Mm -hmm. And then that way it actually makes them feel better because you're saying, I can come to you, yeah. it'll only be a certain amount. I know one other tip you were saying is like to give them the questions ahead of yeah, time absolutely. for the meeting so that they're prepared. But I think if you get another rejective kind of response, then just 
you know, kind of let Racially it lie, bow, out. bow out and just say, hey, hope to see you again soon. Uh, maybe this time will work out. Another. So I will uh, tell you that um, I met the uh, CEO of Sam's Club and uh, sent her an email, asked for, you know, asked for coffee, said, way too busy. I said, great, I understand. I, I said, I understand. I can You're bring, running Sam's Club. Oh, I, said, I know. I said, I can, I, can bring, I can bring the coffee to you. She said, you know, unfortunately, I, I don't have time. And, you know, she said, I, don't, I can't give your answer the thoughtfulness that it requires. So, you know, oh, wow. you know the, the best of luck. So I actually did, like I said, I really appreciate, I really appreciate you even just taking the time to answer that, to, to, to let me know that you don't have the time. If you don't mind, I'd love to, you know, I'd love to, you know, uh, send you the updates that I send to all the other retail executives I speak to. Mm -hmm. She said, no problem. Right? Ah, mm -hmm. That started sending the updates, and then she flew me out to Arkansas. Oh, okay. Right, like a few months later, because she started seeing, she just, they had nothing to do with what we sold, actually, to be honest <laughs> with you. She just flew me out there because she wanted me to sit in with some of her team to discuss some of the trends in retail. But because I was wow. sending these updates, she was like, yeah. That's cool. That's what I'm talking about. You can't take the rejection, uh, the initial re rejection at face value. You kind of still soft sell and leave the door open. Yeah, yeah. And there's been others that have, you know, there's been others um, that have said, you know what, if you bring the coffee to me, I'll give you 15 minutes. They appreciate it, right? I would appreciate it. And then I follow that up with, I want to make these as valuable as possible. Here are the three questions that I'm, that I'm, that I'm looking for answers on. I love it. Look I think forward, that's great advice. I think that's great advice. Any other questions? Um, I think we're just about out of time right now. Um, to answer a few people's questions, the presentation will be available um, once we're done. Uh, it will actually be sent out over email along with a follow-up survey that we would greatly appreciate um, if everyone could fill that out. Um, and otherwise, I just want to thank you guys for your presentation, um, and we hope everyone has a great day today. Yeah, um, I will say if anyone has a specific question, uh, for me, you can email me at willagolemer.com. I'll be more than happy to answer it for you. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Will. Thank you, Melissa, and Thank hopefully you. everybody. Twitter handles. Oh, and our Twitter handles as well, at WFuentes3. Yeah, that's WFuentes3. And at AED Biz Launch. We will see you all soon. Thank you so much for participating.